Hey, welcome to Dreadwall. Today we will review this Marshall head with this great Flex 4x12A cabinet. Now let's start with an audio sample. I'm aware that this pair is not very conventional, in fact while I think many of you are familiar with the Crate brand, I doubt you have even heard the name of this cabinet before because there is almost no information about it on the internet, no review, no information in detail, nothing. However, I don't think we need to talk extensively about a flagship amplifier like the JVM410. Since its production, there are hundreds of pages of information and numerous reviews with various alternative combinations available. Therefore, it would be more accurate to review such a widespread amplifier with a cabinet that is relatively unknown but in my opinion produces a very good sound. Because at Redvolt, that's what we do. Still, if you are a newcomer, allow me to quickly introduce myself. I'm Tolga Sart and I'm trying to explore the limits of the equipment I have in my basement recording area, which is Redvolt. If you want to explore with us, don't forget to subscribe. Also, you can make a huge contribution by leaving a comment. Now, let's quickly talk about the story of the cabinet and then we'll start tweaking this amplifier. The Marshall JVM joined our inventory approximately a month ago. Perhaps every aspect of this amplifier is beyond debate due to the prominent position of both the manufacturer brand and the model in the world of music as well as defining role it plays in the sound of numerous musicians who use this amplifier. Still, perhaps due to my playing style or not being able to reach the desired sound, I haven't played this amplifier for maybe even an hour in the past month. Moreover, for someone like me who loves Megadeth, this amplifier might be a product I've been dreaming of for the last 10 years. Nevertheless, since the day it arrived, I haven't been able to achieve the desired sound with my Mesa Rectifier Standard and ENGL Pro XXL cabinet. Let's set aside this situation and continue. I saw this cabinet in a store's website a few weeks ago and the price was around 500 US dollars. Considering the taxes in my country, the price was probably not more than 200 or 250 dollars in Europe or America back in the day. I say back in the day because this product is probably around 15 years old. Also, it's manufactured in China instead of Britain. And there is no detailed information available on the internet. That's why I was hesitant to order it online. However, a few days ago when I entered the branch of the store near my home to buy some stuff like strings, I saw the cabinet there. It might seem like a normal situation, but the store has dozens of branches in many cities across the country yet they only had two units of this product left in stock. And one of them was here. I tried it with a Blackstar amplifier and considering the price, I realized that if I wanted to buy any 4x12 cabinet to cover with a red Tolex and put a Marshall logo just to match with my red color JVM, I would probably end up paying even more even for a used one. Afterwards, I paid the money and it was time to load it into the car. Until that moment, I hadn't grabbed the cabinet at all. Given that my home cabinets were the primary cause of my back pain, I didn't expect anything different from this cabinet because its dimensions were at the point where it could be called oversized. However, when I wanted to move it, I felt that it might be lighter than even a 2x12 or a 1x12 cabinet. Then no matter how much I trusted the store, just to be sure I asked for a screwdriver and opened the inside of the cabinet. I know I could have checked with a flashlight but the cloth was so dense that I couldn't see it with a phone's light. So I start dismantling the product I had just bought right in the middle of the store. First, I wanted to look inside from the handle on the side, but it's not a very cleverly designed product. I couldn't remove the handle because of the screw type. So to avoid completely removing the back cover, I took off the connection panel at the back. Inside, there were four speakers. When I read the top of one of the speakers, I saw that its brand was SLM Electronics and the date was 2011. Later, when I researched the brand, I couldn't find anything other than a few reverb listings. Anyway, I assembled the amp, loaded it into the car and brought it home. 
I connected it directly to the JVM and played the amplifier continuously for about 45 minutes, which I hadn't touched for almost a month. After a short break, I went back to the studio to play the amplifier again and spent more than an hour experimenting with it. I played it on the floor with the wheels attached, compared tonal chains and saw that it achieved what a $1000 Pro XXL and $2000 rectifier cabinets couldn't with the JVM. Perhaps to get better tone, I didn't need to prefer an American or German made cabinet, but rather I had in my hands a cabinet which is Chinese made, lightweight with unnamed speakers on it and with a surprisingly good sound. Therefore, today we will try this Marshall head with this Crate Flex 4x12A cabinet. Also, I'm gonna use this USA Select Jackson KV2 with an alder body, maple neck, ebony fretboard, with Seymour Duncan JB on the bridge position, with an official Floyd Rose. Also, it tuned to C standard because that's how I like this guitar. Also, we have a Maxon OD808. I know I have a Boss SD1, but I will use this pedal for something different in the future, in the soon future. We have a Shure SM57 to micing up the cabinet. So, let's start. <laughs> So we have four different channels which are clean, crunch, overdrive 1 and overdrive 2 and currently I'm on the overdrive 2. Also for each of every channel we have three variations which are green, orange and red. Now let's start with the OD2 with the green channel and let's close the OD, the Maxon OD obviously. <laughs> Even the green channel is kinda chugging, kinda, but if we open up the OD808... And let's check the orange of the OD2. And let's open up the OD808. Let's lower the gain.
I think the gain is more than enough, the punch is more than enough. And it's really tight, but let's check the red without the OD. I hope you can feel the tightness on the low end. Because of this, I love the red section of the OD2 more than the orange one. Let's open up the OD808 to add some saturation on the palm mutes. And let's lower the gain. Let's check the OD1. Let's start with the green. Actually, let's make an A-B test between the OD1 and OD2 because they are not that different, but still there are some differences between them. So for the green section, OD1 sounds thicker than the OD2 at least. Also the definition and the clarity is better on the OD1. Now let's make a similar comparison with the orange sections. Let's start with OD2. We have no OD808 on the signal chain right now. And I think instantly OD1 became more muddier than the OD2. And let's give a booster.
And with Booster, I think OD1 sounds better than the OD2. You know, it's, it's something different. You can get lots of different stuff from this amplifier with lots of different combinations. It's the beauty of the JVM. And let's check the red. Let's compare the red. And the low end is tighter on the OD2 with booster. Let's close the booster this time. Let's talk about OD1 and OD2. For the green and orange, I prefer the OD1 because it sounds brighter, it sounds crispier, it sounds better. The definition and the clarity is better on the clean and orange sections of the channels. But if I have a booster and I'm looking for a high gain, crashing high gain sound, I definitely picked the OD2. Now let's check the clean and crunch channels of this amplifier to see its soft side if it's possible to get with a Jackson KV2. So let's start with the green version, green side of the clean channel. Now I'm using the 59 Seymour Duncan. Let's decrease the volume. Now we are on the orange. Why it went silent? Yeah. Increase the gain. And let's check the red. And let's give a booster to this sound. Even this sound can be enough at some point. Now let's check the crunch. Let's start with the green again. Let's close the booster. Orange.
and let's check the red. Give a booster to this. You know, I just want to demonstrate these two channels quickly because as I just mentioned, there are lots of videos of this amplifier and there are lots of really good player who already knew how to get a good sound from these two channels, but neither my taste nor my playing is truly fits to these channels. So let's return to the OD2 and chuck some more. So let's talk about this rig as a conclusion and then close the video. I played this Marshall JVM with my Mesa rectifier cabinet which is here and you know the rectifier cabinet has a huge influence on the sound characteristics of an amplifier and it's, it's not the best solution for the pushed mid characteristics of the Marshall and I really don't like the mids of this amplifier. It can be a defining element for a Marshall sound but I don't like it and the Mesa cabinet wasn't a solution for this and when I played this Marshall with my Pro XXL ENGL cabinet it was too hollow and too spiky you know there were no low end and too much pushed mids and high end. Also I played this Marshall with my Huan Kettner MC 4x12 cabinet which is loaded with Celestion lead 80s and it can be a good cabinet for the clean and crunch sounds but there were no tightness from Marshall. Also when I played this cabinet with my Mesa dual rectifier and ENGL fireball 
it wasn't sound tight either so i wasn't happy with the sound from these cabinets with this marsha but when you open up the resonance and the bass knob of the amplifier just a little bit higher than your regular you can get a nice low end from this amplifier with enough mids and tight and chugging high ends so if you are happy with the conventional ways i can't say anything but if you are looking for some adventure i think this cabinet can be a good companion for you at this point i'm not sure about the sound on the microphone but you will get some good sound some better sound with an sm57 on the dead center position with a condenser microphone on the con side of the cabinet on the speaker so this is the end of the video i hope you enjoyed the content please don't forget to subscribe this channel and you can always make a contribution by leaving a comment especially i would love to discuss with you about this cabinet in the comments till the next video see ya